Resolution of enantiomers. If you do a synthesis and you get a pair of enantiomers, they're going to have identical physical properties. You can't separate them by distillation because they have the same boiling point. Filtration won't do you any good either because they're the same size. They crystallize at the same temperature and pressure. So you can't recrystallize them from solution. How do you separate them in that case? And a lot of times when you do synthesis, you're going to get a 50-50 mixture of enantiomers. And a lot of times you'll only be interested in one of them. So you have to be able to separate them. How do you do it? There are a couple of ways. If you're really, really lucky, It'll crystallize and you'll be able to use a microscope and separate right-handed crystals from left-handed crystals. Pasteur was working on wine in 1847 and he found um, two different shaped crystals of sodium ammonium tartrate from a racemic mixture. And so he was able to recrystallize this and then take a magnifying glass and separate right-handed crystals from left-handed crystals. But the vast majority of the time, if you have a racemic mixture that is a 50-50 mixture of two enantiomers, you won't get any crystals. They can't crystallize when they're together. So what do we do? Well, one thing we can do is do chiral column chromatography. So you load your column with a chiral adsorbent material. So that's one way to do it. Another thing to do is a chiral resolving agent. Using a chiral resolving agent allows you to create a pair of diastereomers. Now the diastereomers do have different physical properties and thus can be resolved by physical methods. So say you have a racemic mixture of these phenethanamines, 50% of the S isomer and 50% of the R isomer, and you want to separate them. You react them both with one enantiomer of 2-hydroxysuccinic acid. So here's my enantiomer of 2-hydroxysuccinic acid. So what's going to happen? Well, the amine is a base. It's going to take the most acidic proton. And that'll create an ammonium cation and an S2-hydroxysuccinate. But now we'll have two chirality centers. So let's look at the two different combinations we'll get, because we'll also get a proton transfer reaction with this amine and the 2-hydroxysuccinic acid. So I'll draw those curved arrows in blue, and then I'll draw the two outcomes in red and blue. So one of the salts you get is R on the ammonium and S on the 2-hydroxysuccinate. The other salt you get is S on the ammonium and S on the 2-hydroxysuccinate, which means these are diastereomers. And so you can physically separate them. 